I used to find the most brutal, battered piece of wood. And then once you carve into that wood, it just opens up. I just love that part of it. But I can go on for hours about wood. Well, one of the most memorable first great works I created was um, an image of the experience of my daughter's birth. I just always remember that piece as sort of like the root of everything I've done after that. It seemed to me at the time, and even now, that um, to make art somewhere outside of who I am didn't seem to be worthwhile. I, I use wood that speaks to me. In other words, it, there's something about it that I feel an affinity for. One could explain it similar to meeting a person for the first time that you feel like you might have known before, or you feel definitely want to be this person's friend. So the wood and I, we, we decided we could kind of be friends. And people often ask me why I color the wood so much. Well, if you're using wood, why don't you keep it natural? And it just seemed to me painting the wood was proper. It needed to be clothed. It needed to have that presence. The outside of the wood uh, didn't belie what was inside. Often that's like people, you know, often what's really inside of us we keep so hidden because we, for whatever reason. So there was something special about carving wood. When I found it with a group of, of five other women, uh, the New York Feminist Art Institute, which opened in 1979, we met. And the idea, because that was a very 70s idea, was to see if women really had a difference in the first. And this was a school that was going to begin to develop those possibilities. When I taught work the workshop there called Consciousness Raising Visual Diaries Art Making, I began to uh, show women to make these diaries. And in that way, they began to find their own personal images. Of course, I'm very interested in the idea of female energy and power. You know, giving ourselves permission to be who we are to our utmost as women. Um, you know, allowing that experience of ourselves to be honored and also discovered. Because you know, I think thousands and thousands of years women have been held down and oppressed. And even today, of course, we see it happening all the time. But if groups of women are given a kind of freedom to express who they are, I mean, you can't find out in five years, you can't find out in 20 years, maybe in two or three hundred years, um, there'll be inequality, but inequality with an appreciation of difference, if such exists, that will continue like that, so that'll be, I think.